Hi everybody, I have an incredible lesson today and it's based on the genius of Hippocrates. We all know that Hippocrates was known as the father of medicine, but in those days, 2,400 years ago, they needed to be scholars, not just in um, mathematics, they had to know medicine, the human body, they had to know astrophysics, they had to know um, geography, rhetoric, which is the art of pronunciation and words. So a true doctor in those days was an all-rounded scholar. And he put together this amazing um, body of knowledge. So um, I'm going to show you, like, and today's lesson is we're going to look at the loons of Hippocrates. And just so you know what's coming up in the next 10 minutes, here's a diagram. And we're basically going to show that the curvature of these two loons or moon shapes, the area of that plus that is e equivalent to the red triangle. And that's a very difficult um, concept because how can curvature relate to straight line polygons? And this is the key to satellite um, technology and everything. So th this was done two and a half thousand years ago. And, and most people know Euclid, um, most people know that the, the 13 elements, all the mathematics that we studied at school was based on Euclid's elements. There's actually 13 books like this. And I've got all these 13 in these two books. But um, just so you know, the first um, book of the elements was actually put together by Hippocrates, not Euclid. Euclid wrote the fourth, fifth and sixth, right? And the second and third books are missing. We still don't have them. But Hippocrates, who we're talking about today, actually wrote the first book. And I just want to show you a diagram here, um, and we'll draw it on the board. But you can see here, that diagram where my finger is here, shows a right angle triangle. Uh, this, this only all works if there's a right angle triangle, the key to quarter in the circle. Um, that the rectangles on each side was equivalent, the two rectangles on the smaller sides is equi equivalent to the area on the longer side. And that comes from Pythagoras' theorem. So we all know, everything we're talking about now is that we all know that 3 squared plus 4 squared is 9 plus 16 tiles. Pick them up and put, they all fit on the longer side called the hypotenuse, there's 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. So instead of putting squares, we can put rectangles. That's what they discovered. And then the next step, instead of putting rectangles, why don't we put um, semicircles? And this is where, um, this is what Hippocrates discovered. So let's, let's just go over that. Um, so what I've just explained is that the most famous thing in mathematics equal to the golden ratio is 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So that's what I just showed you, that 3 by 3, 1, 2, 3. And here's, here we've got a square on, um, here we've got a square on the other side. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. 9 plus 16 equals the square on the hypotenuse. And this, that's 5 by 5. But, what I, but what, I else, what I wanted to show you is that the ancient mathematicians knew that if you have a semicircle, see there's the circle, and when we go through the center, that's called the diameter, any triangle that's drawn inside a semicircle is a right angle. So that's what we have here. So any, here we have um, a diameter, and see that semicircle there, what, what they also knew is that I'm going to show you another semicircle over here. So we've got, a tri there, we've got the 3, 4, 5 triangle in there, but we've got a circle here. There's a semicircle, but no matter what triangle you draw inside the semicircle, it's always going to be a 90 degree. So even if I went from there to there, that's still going to be 90 degrees. So I find that that's called an axiom of truth. So these ancient, um, when, they, when Euclid put all these books together, he collected all the laws of geometry from ancient times. Um, so what I just showed you here from Euclid's book, it's called the Proposition 6, V, I, that, that's the Roman writing, V is 5 and a 1, so that's 6, book 6, Proposition 31 is the most famous um, law of mathematics that everyone quotes today. So when we talk about Euclid, Book 6, Proposition 31, it was explaining that 
um, it's, it was showing that not that not just a square. Instead of having squares, we can have and um, we can have rectangles as well. So that rectangle plus that rectangle, um, this rectangle here plus that rectangle here. The sum of these two equals the longest one, and that's what we're going to do with the loon. So. Like I said, we're going to take this triangle here. This is the three, four, five, and I'm going to shade it in red. So I just want you to see that this red triangle is we're trying to find an equivalent in area to this red triangle, but done with curvature. So we can easily calculate that area because it's half a square. So we know we, this is easy to calculate, but what's not easy to calculate is curvature. So there's another law that says that th this semi so here's the diameter that's the semicircle here the area of this whole um, the area of this whole semi we'll call, we'll see, we'll, um, it's this semicircle here so there's a semicircle there there's one below so this whole area is equal to the semicircle on this side here so imagine you put a midpoint there and you, you get your compass, you draw. So that whole area, and here I find the midpoint of this side and I draw a semicircle. So that whole area here and the whole area there, you add them together, it equals that semicircle. So this was already known. But what um, Hippocrates did, he went a step further. He, he went to show that this area of the triangle is equal to something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade in um, um, because we've drawn the semicircle here, and this arc is from the original circle. So I can actually shade in this blue section here. So this is one section. Now over here we've got a semicircle, and this arc here is the original circle. So I'm going to shade in this blue area here. So what Hippocrates did, he did a bit of logic. He said, if this semicircle plus that semicircle equals the large semicircle, he's going to make this blue section disappear. So imagine this is like a green screen. Suddenly all that disappears and all this blue. So everything that you see blue just disappears. And by logic, his, his conclusion was that this loon, I'm going to do it in yellow, so the loon me is the French word for like the moon. So there's a, a moon shape and there's another moon shape. So what we're saying is, is that the loon on the smaller side and this loon on the other smaller side is equivalent to the square area of the red or pink triangle here. So that, that's essentially um, the discovery and this has great implications because suddenly we found a relationship between like squares and circles that if we, if we know this area of a polygon done with straight lines, we found a, an amazing geometry that allows us to discover and calculate curvature and that's what all of trigonometry is about when you're talking about sines and cosines and the unit circle we found an equivalence so this is a, an incredible discovery and not many people are talking about this and i believe that th this this is the part of um the verification that i need to prove that the true value of pi is based on the harmonics of the circle because this is the the unit circle and we've just found, we've just established something very important. But what we're trying to say is that this is ancient knowledge. What we think that we're using now today to advance our technology has already been done two and a half thousand years ago. Um, we can also take, um, um, if we were to, when, when I did this triangle here, this red triangle, I, it was just a random triangle, but we, we could make, we could do the semicircle here. So there's a semicircle. But if I go to the top north point, like I'm drawing a diamond in this, imagine like I'm drawing a diamond, right? So you can draw a triangle that's going right up to the zenith point, like from the center here, it's going right up. So we know that that's a 90 degree angle. And if you did the same construction on this type of triangle here, you draw, you draw the loon on this side here, the semicircle there, 
and the semicircle there, what that's saying is that th this semicircle plus that semicircle equals the larger semicircle. And what we're also saying is that this area here, that loon there and this loon here, is equal to the area of the triangle. But these look like the ears of like a Mickey Mouse character. So what I'm suggesting is that if you look at a typical picture of Mickey Mouse, you'll see that they're more circles rather than loons but we could create a beautiful like sort of animated sort of character that's got lovely ears and you can sort of place in the mouth and but we can use sacred geometry and the loons of Hippocrates to capture the right focal point for beauty and fascination with our drawings so that was why I wanted to show you this that we have a lot of potential to use ancient knowledge and bring it into the animated world and create characters and that by looking at certain characters like this we can resonate to it because this ancient knowledge is in our cellular memory. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and that um, it triggered off some um, appreciation for the masters of old because the knowledge from Atlantis from thousands of years ago is infiltrating into today's education and we want essentially we want everyone learning mathematics to feel a resonance with it. Thank you.